On this episode of China Unscripted, Chinese apps have poisoned your cell phone even after you delete them. You can still be tracked forever. Welcome to China Unscripted. I'm Chris Chappell. And I'm Matt Ganesta. And Shelly Jiang will not be joining us today. She's busy recording backing vocals and harmonies for our heavy metal album. We'll miss her. But joining us today is Dr. Jaswinder Sekhan. He is an industry expert in the field of cybersecurity and software engineering. He's also an assistant professor at GTV National College, Dhaka in India. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Chris. Hi, Matt. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Good, good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so let's let's start this off. I think what's what's very interesting is uh, how the unique things the Indian government has done to sort of stand up to the Chinese Communist Party, things that, uh, you know, many other countries should be doing but haven't. Uh, for example, the Indian government banned TikTok and 58 other Chinese apps back in June 2020. Uh, and that, that, tend, that happened around the time of, of, of the, the border clash. How did, how did that really sort of change how people were talking about China in India? Uh, well, actually, it all started out, uh, you know, when India and China, Chinese troops clashed on the border in June 2020. So uh, it, that particular incident actually, you know, uh, just emerged as an anti-China sentiment across the nation. And uh, people became too furious with, the, uh, with that particular thing because 20 Indian soldiers died in that particular incident. So when that happened, many uh, there was uh, a complete outrage in the country. Many people went to the streets, burned Chinese products. And during that particular tenure, uh, many Indian people also became much aware of how these Chinese applications and how these Chinese products were actually, you know, were putting a harm in their, uh, were, were putting a harm to their country. So that particular incident actually you know, uh, was, I would say, uh, forced, uh, I would not say forced, but that particular incident actually uh, compelled the Indian government to take some major steps like banning those particular apps. And uh, that was the turning point, I would say. And then till date, they are continuing to banning the apps that are uh, actually, you know, uh, that, uh, that are stealing the data from uh, many of the uh, customers. You know, with TikTok, it, it amazes me. Like, it's it's come out now through leaked audio that, uh, you know, TikTok, being part of a Chinese company, Douyin, uh, Beijing has access to all of uh, uh, the, the user data of TikTok users around the world. And this was something, like, everyone knew was going to be happening. And yet, uh, even though the Trump administration tried to ban TikTok, that was something the Biden administration stopped. Right. And I'm just wondering, like, is it going to take... It, American soldiers being killed by Chinese troops for uh, the, the West to wake up? Possibly, you know, uh, a lot of uh, uh, political interferences uh, also are to be held accountable, right? When the Trump took the right step of banning TikTok and probably uh, Biden came into scene uh, and uh, he was trying to revamp each and everything that had happened earlier. But now I think uh, it's a great wake-up call for everyone that, you know, this particular app, TikTok, especially it's, a, I would say it's a very parasitic app because it's just, you know, driving our young generation into clowns because each and every particular person is, you know, showing up with 10 and 12 seconds videos and putting up online. And especially having said that, we must also realize that, China, uh, especially investing a lot in artificial intelligence, and these apps are backed by artificial intelligence. So these artificial intelligence algorithms are forcing people, are forcing their mindsets to see more and more videos, you know, which they like. And the sharing keeps on going on and more and more people keep downloading those particular things. And uh, we all know that TikTok has been, uh, you know, a great TikTok has been, a, I would say it's a disaster uh, to the young generation. 
So are you suggesting that China is sort of using its, you know, its decades of behavioral research and its AI development to actually change the psychology of users of TikTok? Yes, uh, changing the psychology. And uh, also we must realize one thing that, uh, you know, just a scenario that when, you know, TikTok was launched, uh, it was uh, in, uh, you know, it broke all the records of all other apps. It was the most downloadable, uh, downloadable app. And in India alone, uh, it was like the second largest, it had the second largest customer database after China. So, yes, it is actually uh, putting a, uh, I would say, full stop on our mental well-being of the younger generation. Well, th this is interesting because I know the uh, the Indian Cyber Crime Coordination Center is talking about banning uh 267 other Chinese apps, including really big ones like WeChat. Uh, right. Now, that, that was something that was also discussed under the Trump administration, banning like WeChat, as well as TikTok. And there was a huge pushback against that, that like, you know, this was cutting off people from like relatives and family in or China. That it was censorship. Or that it was censorship. How is the Indian public receiving this? Because it seemed like they were all on board for the TikTok ban, a lot of pushback in America. How are these other app bans being received well uh, i would say a section of people in india also you know uh, were uh, not going well with the ban on these apps because many of them had their livelihood also from these apps like tiktok they were earning money from tiktok uh, but slowly and slowly as uh, uh, you know the tensions grew between the two countries and uh, Many people understood and many actually were not in the favor. But as we should all know that, uh, you know, apps like WeChat are also stealing our data. And we also name a few, few like, uh, you know, Baidu Maps is also there. So if we compare these apps compared to the other applications, I know that other applications also, you know, tend to have data from the customers. But if you compare Chinese apps and the other applications, it is like comparing, um, you know, a small cup of water with the ocean because they are actually having a hell lot of data and they are receiving each and every detail of a particular person. Like uh, just for an example, I would say that uh, many particular apps, uh, these Chinese apps are also, uh, you know, asking permissions for uh, location services. Now, I know many other applications also ask for your location services, but the thing is, they pinpoint the location services to the finest detail. Normally, it's like a square kilometer or something. But if we talk about these particular Chinese apps, they are continuously monitoring your location to the finest point. So that is not required in, uh, you know, uh, applications like uh, WeChat or uh, other things like TikTok. So if you use TikTok, basically someone in the Chinese government could potentially know exactly where you are. Yes. But what about when you're not using the app? You just have it on your phone. The thing is, whenever you're not using the app or even when you're not using that particular application, uh, I would uh, you know, uh, like to uh, bring it to your notice that there is a thing called IMSI number. That is international mobile, international mobile subscriber identity. So when they have that IMSI number, what happens is even if you change your phone, your SIM card is actually, you know, uh, connected to that IMSI number. So they can actually, uh, they have a surveillance around you 24 seven, no matter what, no matter if you do not have that application either. So what do you think the Chinese Communist Party is doing with that data? Because that seems like, a, especially in India, that's an incredible amount of data on people. It seems like impossible to even like process that. What, what's, how are they using it? The thing is that, uh, you know, uh, norm, they're not going to do anything with the location services of a normal person. But if that particular application lands up in uh, some government official's phone or uh, in, in any particular... Uh, uh, I would say uh, any uh, civil servants uh, uh, mobile. So that can do a lot harm. Uh, that can actually, you know, uh, 
steal a lot of confidential information that is there that is why the indian government also you know specifically said that no particular uh, people in the indian army or any other defense services should have these particular applications so but uh let's say you know you're an indian customer you had tiktok but then you deleted it the chinese government still has your um was it isi number or I- imsi I- yes the imsi a, number yes right so yes, if they so, do have it they can track you so they can still track you even after you've deleted the app yes exactly like because once you've installed the app your phone is basically poisoned forever yes your phone is basically poisoned forever the only thing is if you change your sim number if you change your sim card and that is the only probability you'll get rid of it that's incredible. And so this would also include things like uh, the, uh, Weibo, WeChat, uh, PUBG Mobile. PUBG Mobile, yes, exactly. That's incredible. I mean, so many people have downloaded these apps. Yeah. I'm, and their I'm, phones are poisoned forever. Yeah, and especially, you know, uh, in recent times, we've also discovered that uh, many uh, terrorist organizations are using games as... Uh, the way to communicate with each other. How do you mean? Uh, like uh, the gaming networks, like, you know, PlayStation and Xbox and uh, all the other games. So people tend to play, you know, in groups. Uh, one person is sitting in India, the other person is sitting in uh, States or Canada. So they can chat with each other, right? So they can mm. uh, talk with each other while playing the games. So now the new way of communication uh, for the terrorists are through games. They find it more secure. That's incredible. I knew there was something weird about that Minecraft chat I was on. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I'm curious, like, you know, the the border clash where the, the, the Indian soldiers died, that was in 2020. Has uh, sort of the anger over that cooled in the Indian public? Uh, are people aware of what the risk of these apps are? Well, I would say many people are aware, but at the same time, you know, uh, India is a country where uh, a majority section of people are not educated. But now, since the economy is developing so much, uh, even a person who is uneducated will have a smartphone, but he will never know about what, about, what will be the shortcomings of the particular apps he is downloading, whether that particular app is Chinese in nature or not. So it's, uh, you know, this whole scenario is pretty jumbled up and, uh, and to educate each and every particular person regarding it is a major task. Yeah, because I, I, I don't feel like, at least in the United States, everyone really understands the risk of these apps or what the Chinese Communist Party is doing. So... I think the biggest obstacle is always like getting the public to understand the risk. So it will be accepting of like, you know, a government ban on, you know, these mega apps that they're using. Absolutely right. You know, the thing is that uh, when India banned these particular apps, we could see uh, many people actually uh, posting jokes on social media about uh, that uh, the Chinese actually, you know, uh, assaulted Indian soldiers and all that the Indian government is doing is actually banning the apps and nothing else but the real point of understanding over here is that uh, uh, china almost lost like 200 to 300 million customer base in india and uh, it actually hit them in a you know uh, in a good economical uh, in a economical manner so not each and every person cannot understand this particular sect because majority of them are not well educated with you know, uh, I must say cybersecurity uh, basics or stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I I guess I just it it's it's interesting how big of an impact the banning of apps has. Obviously, the Chinese government was not happy about it and probably you know accused India of all sorts of things. Let's talk a bit about uh, hacking as well because. These uh, these apps obviously have a kind of backdoor which allows, say, that the the app company to you know uh, tick, TikTok or Douyin can see the user's location or Baidu Maps can see your location. But 
Uh, what about like outside hackers too? Can they also use those same backdoors to access uh, detailed user data? Well, the thing is, uh, these apps like tick, if we say about TikTok, WeChat, or Baidu, these all these apps have uh, a common thing that are you know that these are made by Chinese professionals, Chinese developers. So a recent, uh, uh, there was a recent uh, study in which it indicated that what has happened is that the data, the amount of data that gets stolen, 70% to 75% of data in the last three or four years got stolen through these professional applications. And only 20 to 30% data got stolen through, we can say like, you know, Trojan horses or viruses or uh, whatever the other techniques the hackers use to actually exploit the data. So now what is happening is, as we you know earlier pointed out in our uh, conversation, that whenever we are downloading the app, the app always asks, you know, would like to use your microphone, would like to access your camera, would like to access your contact list. So it is basically asking you and you're yourself giving the permissions each and every time you're more interested in actually, you know, uh, playing with that particular app and, and not with those particular questions that are there. So we ourselves are giving permission to that particular thing. So the greater risk in this point is that uh, we should be wary of what particular applications are asking for, which particular permissions are they asking for? Because those permissions are actually directly related uh, to your data uh, getting stolen to other countries or your data getting, uh, you know, uh, getting to other countries rather than uh, Trojan horses or viruses or even backdoors, I would say. It's really interesting. It's, it sounds just like a deal with the devil. Like you actually have to sign away. Sign, uh, yes. You have to exactly. give permission to it. Yeah. But also it's, it's like if, if you, if you download an app, you're giving away some kind of permissions usually, but if it's a Chinese app, the amount of data they collect is so granular that it just in general puts you at greater risk of having more of your information stolen by any kind of random hackers, whether they're Russian hackers, Iranian hackers, or you know Canadian hackers. Right. Yeah, because once that data is out there, right? You know, the you know the majority of the problem is that whenever uh, our data is going to a particular location, it does not stop there. There is someone who is also you know selling that data off to third party companies. And you suddenly see that you're receiving spam emails and you suddenly see, you know, a lot of other content that you have no idea where it came from. But the thing is, your data keeps on getting sold to other third party vendors or third party companies and they use, their, use that data. Yeah, it sounds like a pitch for our sponsor Incogni, which helps remove <laughs> that data. Uh, but that's no, that's not the point to, to do a, a pitch here. But uh, it's so okay. Let, let, let's say you you've downloaded WeChat or, or Baidu Maps, TikTok, and you've deleted these. But like they can still track your data. They can still track, you know, with your IMSI number. Can they also like for example like can you can the Chinese government see a former TikTok user's location in real time? And can they track back the history of that location? So for example, like on a government official who gets elected, they can go back and see like the last three years of where they were. Uh, if they have the information about IMSI number, they can have your complete timeline, which phone you were using, which applications you were using in that particular phone, which SMSs were going through and, you know, coming in. So they can have the all the timeline from the day that IMSI number was actually traced. That is the thing. Yeah, I, I think what's what's interesting to think about here is like, okay, as we know, not every government official is completely clean, right? Some of them have you know secret meetings or you know had affairs or whatever the thing is, right? And theoretically this information could then be collected and used as blackmail. So now you have like a lot of elected officials that could potentially, because at one point for like two months, they had TikTok and now they can be blackmailed because well, someone can trace everything. Well, if they also have then, access to microphone data, they could hear everything, including affairs. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a very interesting part because 
uh, you know in future we would actually see uh, these kind of applications playing a greater role in uh, uh, you know starting a government in some other country and collapsing a government in some other country uh we have recently seen such a scenario i would not say directly but uh, where when trump was elected the cambridge analytica stuff that happened you know all the data got uh, you know siphoned off from facebook and stuff like that so we would see the times where these applications would be a deciding factor in major superpowers across the world well even worse if uh, i know the us military has banned like tiktok for troops i'm pretty sure about that but if you know this is a way that uh, you know the chinese government could track troop movements for any military power around the world like that's that's incredibly important uh war data that they're collecting right uh, you know that is the sole reason that majority of uh, the armies in the world uh they they do not allow uh, your smartphones uh, whenever you're on duty they would always you know use a technology that is uh, before the smartphone games the keypad uh, the uh, mobile phones with keypads and stuff that do not have a camera so yes that is a major threat well so what about um, somebody who's like i'm just an average guy i just want to play a little pug g on my phone what is the problem for me as just some random person well the thing is for a random person if you ask that okay if for a random person you say you know, they have your mac address and they have your location probably a random person won't mind but until a situation has occurred you know we have had numerous incidences where actually normal people uh, have been subjected to uh, i would say questioning that how did this particular incident happen and he had no particular idea because his particular mobile phone was used for some misdoing because they had all the details about that particular uh, mobile phone like as i said if you have certain details from your mobile phone anything can happen a certain uh, message a certain message or a certain email can be flown through your particular mobile phone to somebody else so yes it is a grave concern the only thing is people don't react until and unless something happens to them yeah i just realized something like you know like look, look at the advancements in artificial intelligence technology in the last decade right like a decade ago youtube couldn't screen for content because the ai wasn't powerful enough to know what people were saying in the videos but now youtube can easily and very quickly do enough voice recognition to know like what content is okay what content they want to remove so imagine what ai is going to be like in 10 years right you're an average person but you've been involved in some kind of crime or wrongdoing maybe a minor thing maybe it was 10 years ago but you now have ais that are powerful enough to find these patterns of say whether it's petty crime behavior or or misconduct or whatever and then like basically automatically sends you some kind of threat right that says like oh you know we know about blank 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 and then just an average person would like be targeted but it doesn't it doesn't require the like currently manpower in say the chinese government or hackers or whatever like would have to be like okay we want to put the manpower into specifically tracking this one official or this one target but ai could target a billion people or scroll through the data of a billion people and and threaten them just because now there's the power to do that quickly uh yes coming to that point you know uh, it is very interesting that china is actually adopting this particular technology to actually uh you know scan each and every particular person their history and what do they do and they have these uh, you know score cards for each and every particular person the artificial intelligence has a score card for all right this particular person is 90% accurate 77% 89% so they are already doing this particular thing in their own country so yes you know artificial intelligence is coming up in a very great way and in future i would say you can name each and everything would be happening through artificial intelligence whether you're hiring someone whether you're firing someone on your job and uh, 
it can sense it it will be sensing each and everything that the humans have not been able to uh, accomplish in the past years yeah you get this like scorecard for people i can see how this would also be like an easy way for other countries to implement a kind of social credit system like okay for example 10 years from now ai is super advanced uh, it can go back and track everybody's history with their uh, IMSI number and whatever, and then say an American company that's looking to hire people uh, buys user data and social credit scores from a third-party company. And that third-party company has gotten that data from China because China has been collecting it. And then that somehow filters its way back to an American company, which maybe doesn't even know where that data came from, or at least has plausible deniability. And so now you have this Chinese style social credit system that's been augmented by AI that can then be picked up by American companies to basically implement a type of social credit system. And for the audience, what's important about what Matt said is, is by using, um, you know, the constitution makes it, so that the government can't spy on American citizens without uh, a warrant. However, the American government can and currently does buy information from private third parties. So if these, if some third party is getting this from a mass style Chinese surveillance program, right. that the, would be a way that the US government- US government just buys this data and they see, oh, you know, out of these 300 million citizens, uh, here are, a hundred thousand that are likely based on this AI data to have committed some crime in the last, I think seven years is a statute of limitations, right? So they could just like go back and then do more investigation on these people. And technically, if they bought the data, that's not a violation of the Fourth Amendment. I can see why some politicians are, are very keen to, uh, you know, collaborate and work with China. I mean, I, I think that that the thing is that like the the more the, the more you get into it, like the more people that are compromised by it, the more politicians will side with China on issues, uh, which then just brings in more of being compromised. So it just like increases how much compromat everyone has had collected on them. And then there's like no way out of all this government corruption because everyone has been tracked. I'm just imagining this terrible, terrifying future. You know, even if we go on YouTube and we search, uh, let's say new shoes or a new laptop or whatever, and suddenly it starts showing up, each and every ad starts showing up on different, uh, you know, uh, websites, because it knows that currently today what you're looking for. So let's say it goes a step ahead and then yes, absolutely, you're right. Uh, in coming years, we could actually see that happening where each and every person is trapped by AI, where they know what your net, next step is going to be. Yeah. I mean, just for an ordinary person, it can be embarrassing too. Like, I don't want everyone to know that I buy shoes at Shoegasm. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. Because, you know, whenever you open your laptop and uh, let's say somebody is standing by your side and he sees your what you know, what kind of ads... Uh, your browser is displaying. So if he's smart enough, he can know what you've actually searched for in the past 24 hours. I guess so the way to explain to just somebody who doesn't really pay attention, it's like just imagine a world where there is absolutely zero privacy, where just everything you do is out there. That's basically what the world is today, really. But yeah. We, we haven't AI seen develops. the consequences for that yet on yeah. any large scale. Well, we haven't actually, because, you know, as we already discussed, uh, it's, you know, the, the system keeps on running and each and everything seems uh, natural in a particular manner. But only when you know the consequences, one person knows the consequences and possibly, you know, uh, illustrates it to others, only then it can become a little, uh, a little bit more, uh, I would say, people will know things only then. So how do we uh, stem the tide of this? Because it already seemed like the Chinese Communist Party, like d from what you're saying, it doesn't even necessarily matter that the Indian government ha has banned these apps. If people have downloaded them, that's already most of the, most people in India, most people around the world, they already have their hooks into. 
that is the sole reason you know one that is one of the reasons i would say that uh, china is actually way ahead in technological terms and it is actually matching up to us in terms of uh, technology and uh, i would say that uh, many of the major superpowers are actually afraid that it will one day it will surpass each and every other superpower in the whole world and that is why we can see a lot of politics also being involved like in banning uh, many other applications or uh, companies like huawei as well but we should talk about huawei i know the indian uh, government has is not allowing huawei to be involved in uh, 5g there uh, what are, are there different risks associated with huawei well the thing is that uh, you know uh, one thing that each and every country today in the whole world is afraid of is that uh, the chinese uh, you know national intelligence law that came into being in 2017 so that law states that each and every uh, private firm that is there whether it is huawei whether it is bytedance whether each and every uh, firm that is there so they you know they they must actually help uh, the chinese government if the chinese government asks for data that states they they should help in each and every circumstance so each and every country is actually afraid let us suppose uh, huawei comes into india or huawei comes into any other country with their 5g networks and start stealing uh, mass data mass telecommunication data and uh, that has uh, that will be a great uh, you know economic loss for the country because nowadays what is happening is data is the new oil in today's days and we cannot afford that uh, data being uh, you know one con- once country's data being uh, actually uh, be seen by the other countries or being used by the other countries well i know in india even though they're they're banning huawei from the 5g uh, huawei phones are still available for sale well that is one actually uh, you know they've not banned huawei yet in 2019 uh, you know uh, the indian government said that okay huawei could participate in 5g and then the 2020 standoff happened between india and the chinese soldiers and then uh, currently what happened was that uh, huawei was excluded from the list of 5g probables uh, that was there so yes your point that still huawei phones are still used in india but uh, comparatively now what has happened is that uh, there are there will be very 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 less people who are using these particular phones because now they don't have google support as well uh, but in future we could also see that huawei phones being banned by the indian government or uh, you know the other governments as well in the whole world if you had a huawei phone would that be would that be essentially like if you had downloaded tiktok on your phone like they have everything about you no matter what well not exactly actually because uh, i would say there is a difference between how a hardware works and how a particular software works so having a particular application that keeps on monitoring to you, monitoring you 24/7 uh, hardware has its own complexities uh having said that i would not say that yes it is completely safe uh if i ever have been given an option between any other particular phone or huawei i would definitely exclude huawei from my list but of course huawei to varying degrees is available in almost every country right i mean you know like india is is sort of unique in terms of keeping Huawei out of the networks uh Huawei phones are only now less than 2% of new phone sales in India but if you go to like you know Nigeria or many African countries you go to uh most you know Southeast Asian countries uh Latin America like Huawei is everywhere it's in the phones and it's uh increasingly in the uh the cellular networks or internet networks so This seems crazy. Uh but explain why countries are making this deal to allow Huawei in because surely like the intelligence agencies in even smaller countries understand at some level that this is like letting the devil in. Okay, so well the thing is 
that you know uh, majority of the countries uh, as you mentioned uh, like majority of the developing countries are letting huawei in and letting their operations uh, run 24/7 the thing is that huawei is actually uh, as compare if we compare huawei to the other 5g uh, network probable companies you'll see that huawei is actually doing all of the work in a fraction of cost what the other you know uh, companies are providing because huawei is quite big and it is a company that can actually uh, afford uh, uh, providing uh, you know 5g services at a fraction of cost what the other uh, possible companies are providing so i think that is one of the main reasons why uh, some of the developing uh, countries are not going for uh, i would say uh, more expensive uh, uh, options over there because probably that is one of their disadvantages and uh, strong economies uh, upcoming economies are uh, you know uh, all are in one stand to actually ban huawei and because they know they can actually understand the long term uh, risks associated with that particular thing Yeah, I guess if you're like, you know, Uruguay or some like, you know, developing country, you just don't have the resources. Like, of course you're going to get this the slightly cheaper thing because you you can't afford anything else. Right. That is one of the main reasons that is there. One of the other reasons I also think that, you know, when the US actually banned uh Huawei, so we could actually see each and every US ally uh doing the same thing you know after us many other countries uh, like uk india all of them uh, getting in line to actually do the same particular thing that was there so yes i would say a little bit of politics is also involved but definitely the major reason over here is a security concern well this is what's scary about the belt and road initiative because th- that's china's trillion dollar multi trillion dollar investment plan around the world and what the chinese communist party is doing is they're basically bringing all of these developing countries into a sphere of influence of the chinese communist party because with the belt and road investment always comes huawei it would obviously also come with all of these chinese apps so basically they are they are just eating up these other countries not just with the investment and the debt that comes with that but also all of their future digital infrastructure will forever be a part of this enormous beast that china has created absolutely right you can you know uh, one such example that is in front of us right now is uh, sri lanka also that was in huge chinese debts and now the country is you know just on uh, it, 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 the economy has collapsed they have no way of paying back those huge sums to china as well so yes uh, china has a very smart way of actually uh, you know pressurizing the other small smaller nations that are there and in countries like this when like people start to rebel and the government start to do an authoritarian crackdown you mean like sri lanka like like sri lanka if uh you know all of the people have huawei phones or have chinese apps that is data that china can easily give to an authoritarian leader to help them crack down on dissent yes that is right and uh, you know as uh, matt also earlier mentioned that uh, majority of the countries are still having huawei with them and that is actually working great for china i i realized something uh as you were as you were talking that like it, it's like basically the chinese communist party is creating a new world order with data like I always thought that this talk of like a new world order and I always think of like you know these billionaire like Europeans and Americans that they're you know world economic forum like that type of thing. The algorithm is already banning us. Right. No, but I I know <laughs> and 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 I'm not saying that that that's actually what's happening. I'm saying like that's that's the kind of common uh stereotype of a new world order like this new government. But actually in a way what the Chinese Communist Party is doing through data collection and data surveillance is a new world order because it is it is setting a new paradigm for how people are tracked throughout their entire lives how information on people is collected and the more information you can get about people the more you can control them and then 
like which and not just control them in the sense of like an authoritarian kind of way but like as we were talking about earlier in the podcast psychological manipulation even like manipulating what kind of products you want to buy there's a whole like with that kind of information and data you can manipulate people and control them in ways that are not necessarily what we consider like you know a 1984 authoritarian style it can be very uh, brave new world kind of like make it can control what you're interested in how you think about topics what kind of products you want to buy well no I, i've always been interested in cute shoes just adding on to your point please please carry on with where you're getting at well no so so i mean i i guess this this is kind of what it's making me think right so again it's a it's a a different type of new world order but one that's actually realist like it's it's more realistic than a bunch of old billionaire white guy sitting in a room smoking cigars. <laughs> so so is that your own thought or has the AI God manipulated you so you think that? I, I don't think the AI would manipulate me to think that this particular thing is true. That's no. what you think. But it's, is that it's, thought it's, even this is a real mind game. But anyway, I, I'll, I'll let you I'll let you, you know, uh, share your you thoughts know, think- on that probably uh, what you say uh, the new world order and uh, probably that is one of the reasons that uh, rest of the world is afraid of and uh, probably they were more uh, i would say comfortable with the you know billionaire white guy sitting in his chair and controlling the world rather than a particular authoritarian who would actually dictate each and every particular term and uh, uh, you know there there'll be a i would say new rules would be coming up in the uh, coming 10 years or 20 years and we would see uh, a completely different form of uh, uh, you know uh, i would say a different form of a development in the it sector where uh, countries like china would uh, definitely you know rule the roost yeah i just imagine like the the current you know onslaught of like Chinese AI bots on like Twitter and Facebook, all just getting more effective at like pushing out messages of like, hey, you know, why doesn't China have the best democracy? Why doesn't China have the best human rights? Just slowly getting people to change how they think about these things and molding people's minds to whatever the Chinese Communist Party wants. You know, they've been very successful in uh, actually, uh, uh, you know, keeping their people uh you know closed from the rest of the world because while we were discussing wechat at the start of a uh, you know episode and they are also flagging off some of the messages that uh, come in wechat so which they think that uh, you know would be uh, detrimental for uh, their own people's thinking about how the world actually views china so yes they are actually controlling uh, you know quite a bit of uh, the ai market over here and uh, but the surprising part over here is also that you know uh, that the chinese people uh, living in china are also very aware that yes majority of the companies are actually using their data in a uh, in a very detrimental way and uh, if you look it up there is uh, you know there are, uh, there are there were many people who actually complained about this that uh, majority of the data that was uh, asked by some particular apps had no meaning of actually uh, taking that particular data like let us suppose uh, if we are talking about some particular uh, i would say um, uh, particular application related to maps so a particular application related to maps does not need your contacts does not need your webcam does not need any other xyz thing except your location all right so but majority of the permissions you know that they are uh, putting up in that uh, particular application is the way that you see that they are actually uh, asking for a hell lot of more data that then than they need now i know china didn't come up with this technology by themselves. A lot of it was, well, a lot of it was stolen from the West, but a lot of it was also created because of collaborations between Western companies like Google and Microsoft with, you know, essentially the Chinese state. Did they have a sense of what they were building? 
uh, well if we you know when these particular i think when when these particular technologies were built uh, china actually took it a step further and uh, possibly no one actually even thought that uh, uh, this particular thing could actually end up like the way it is uh, right now so nobody actually thought it will go us that much further and uh, it would put the rest of the world in a such an awkward position where data is being stolen and data is being used by the other countries for their own benefits do you think uh, like these western tech companies that help build these systems for the chinese communist party do you think they will what do you think is more likely that they will have to start trying to figure out a way to combat the chinese system or will they just get swallowed up by the chinese system themselves uh i think currently you know china is moving at a very very great pace and uh, it will be very difficult to actually uh, ignore china keeping in mind the resources they have keeping in mind the technology they have i think uh, by x y or z means they had they'll have to adapt or they'll have to adopt some of uh, you know the innovations that are being made by chinese today So even if the rest of the world starts to create bans on uh, a lot of these Chinese apps I'm sure that won't stop the Chinese Communist Party's ambitions if they no, you know, do like like you said if if we ban Huawei today probably there'll be some other company tomorrow and probably if you ban some other company then there'll be another company day after tomorrow so uh, you know Huawei has uh, had a very you know skyrocket approach they've uh, grown uh, multiple times in in the last uh, in the last decade or so so if if it is not huawei it will be some other company as well it's like hydra uh but like okay so i, I what this kind of reminded me of is is uh earlier this year after russia invaded ukraine the the biden administration put a bunch of sanctions on russia right and so you know uh, like oil and gas in europe did a lot of these sanctions and it's like okay these are really punishing for us too but at least we're blocking stuff from from, from russia but then like us the us is still despite these sanctions they make an exception for certain things that the us still really needs like russian uranium and it's like like you, once you let like a little bit of stuff in like a little bit of exceptions especially when it comes to data like you can make your entire network vulnerable because of one little exception that is exactly what is there as you discussed this war you know uh, when us banned the all imports and you could actually see that from india our alliance is uh, still buying uh, oil from russia and then giving it to the other countries as well so it will always be an exception china is so big and it's very hard to ignore i would say or even impossible to ignore well especially with the belt and road uh you know a bunch of countries around the world need this kind of infrastructure they need 5g they need mobile networks and if china is always providing a cheaper alternative uh they will always fall under chinese influence no matter what the west bans exactly you know if people in us or administration in us would not be just uh, i would say just you know preoccupied with the us territory they will be moving across to other nations where you know the other nations are will be completely occupied by china in terms of technology as well so you cannot uh, completely ignore that particular fact yes well so india is you know the largest democracy in asia it has its second most populous country what unique things can india do to counter the chinese communist party that like the united states might not be able to well uh you know one of the things that uh, uh both the countries india and china actually uh, have in common is uh that both are uh, you know both have excessive raw materials um i would say labor that costs quite less so to hit the country to hit china in a uh, uh, in a manner where uh, you know they uh, actually 
bleed a lot of cash is to actually have companies bigger multinational companies in silicon valley set up their operations in india which will uh, definitely uh, shift uh, you know a great power trend in uh, the coming years i think that's an, a really interesting point it goes back to you know what you said about earlier about banning these apps that that was a huge economic hit when suddenly india banned all of these different apps and if like India and maybe Taiwan too, since they make the the best semiconductors, that they became truly global international economic powerhouses. That would be a, a devastating blow to the Chinese Communist Party. If you cut out their money, everything else collapses. All right. That is one particular step we, you know, uh, let's see if that particular thing happens or not. Because uh, as it sounds so simple being said, it is you know it has a lot of uh, economic repercussions for the bigger companies as well so let's wait and watch what happens yeah what do you think are some of the barriers to that uh, you know greater focus on india and taiwan some of the greater barriers is that you know uh, china will still be a lot more economical than what india is even if india has second most largest population in the whole you know whole world it does not matter about that particular fact now if i'll just tell you a simple example you know if i uh, i'll take an example of a simple company over here that if i order some uh, i would say uh, bolts a company that is producing screws and nuts and bolts if i produce a large order of it probably indian company would take 6 months to deliver that particular thing whereas china would deliver it in a week and at a fraction of a cost as well so majority of the indian companies are also getting uh, their uh, raw materials from china relabeling them and uh, you know selling it uh, again in india and abroad as well so these kind of things will always be there and a businessman will always see profits rather than i would say what happens you know he'll be less uh, i would say occupied by who is stealing my data or not Is that also just because China has built up its infrastructure, roads and rails and and shipping ports to the degree that it just facilitates much faster trade uh or is there something else going on? Well as I said, you know, that is also one of the reasons that yes it can facilitate trade in a uh, I would say in a faster manner. But the thing is that each and everything that uh, you know in the whole world whenever we are talking about any particular business we'll see that companies would always you know have their operations in china because it is proving them you know uh, a lot beneficial in a very very less economical way and the production in uh, they are able to produce is a lot lot higher in a very less time that is one of the reasons Yeah, I mean there's there's a lot of advantages to. Do you think maybe India should adopt the policies of like slave labor and no environmental standards? Maybe that would help. Uh well I don't think so that you know uh, this would be uh, very helpful uh, in India that providing slave labor or something like that. This is uh, Just to be clear, I was of- joking. I think it didn't come across. <laughs> yeah, that was Well, I miss Shelly. Yeah, no, Shelly Shelly was was going to be here but she she couldn't make it today. She usually she usually will give me a look when I'm making a, a horrible <laughs> joke. Uh but in this case there there was no one to do that. And Fortunately, so, the AI, maybe someday the AI can predict when you're going to make a horrible joke and just like give you a little shock ahead of time. Oh, well, that would be great. It'd, it'd be like pre pre crime but for my bad jokes. For bad jokes. I support this technology. Uh Well, yes, you support it now until you see it applied to you. I don't have bad jokes. Well, that's what you think now. See this and, and this kind of speaks to the heart of this whole thing, which is it doesn't affect me now. I just, you know, need this for this one purpose, for example, to shock Matt so he stops making bad jokes. But ultimately, it's going to affect you, it's going to affect Shelly, it's going to affect you, it's going to affect everyone. <laughs> and we're all going to get shocked before making bad jokes. And I accept that if it stops you. Okay, well that's that's a deal with the devil. <laughs> um but anyway, I I think my my point uh was that 
you know, it's very hard for India to compete with slave labor and, uh, you know, cheap electricity that comes at the expense of the environment. Because uh, you just, if India wants to be true to its principles, you, you just can't do that sort of thing to people. That was actually a good point. You should have phrased it like that from the first. <laughs> Yeah. India is not a, I would say it is not an authoritarian type of, it does not have an authoritarian type of government. So that speaks a lot about its, you know, culture and uh, it's a true democracy. So do you think it's a weakness? Like is democracy weaker than its Chinese style authoritarianism? No, it is not a weakness actually. No, it is, it is not a weakness. I think uh, democracy is a beautiful thing. You know, where the, uh, you have so many uh, religions, you, so many cultures, and all of them are living under uh, under one one umbrella. So I think uh, it is a very positive thing, actually. If, you know, we cannot just uh, relate to one particular thing that in certain stance that we cannot surpass a particular country, then democracy is a weakness. I, I don't think uh, that point should be taken into account. Now, is there something that um, individuals can do? People watching this are, are bound to be as terrified as I have been for the last hour. Um, what can an individual living in India or in the United States or Europe do now that they realize that these apps, these Chinese apps are tracking everyone, but even after you delete the apps, you know, they're tracking, you know, Governments and private corporations are, are, you know, buying up this data. Like, what what can individuals do to free themselves from this now before governments get off their butts and take action? Well, I think, uh, you know, the only way is that possibly the government should also step in and uh, try to actually, uh, you know, teach its uh, uh, country about which particular things are uh, actually good and which particular things are harmful. They should actually, uh, you know, tell that what is going on with this particular application. And uh, because the thing is that people listen, uh, always listen to, I would say, where, uh, listen to a particular perception where they say, okay, I'm losing at this particular part. So people should get educated and the only way they'll be getting educated is with the help of the government and you know not by the likes of any particular individual the government needs to step in government needs to add this particular thing as a subject in the curriculum so i think many of the uh, people would get educated at an early front you know at an early age that will help a lot i mean that that sounds good but my experience living in the United States of America over the last five years is that half the country does not listen to the government at any particular time. Yes, you're right. What I mean to say is that, you know, when the government steps in and uh, puts this particular thing as a curriculum in, uh, you know, your uh, education. So when is that is when you, the students or when the young younger generation is going to schools or younger generation is going to universities, they would learn it over there. So, you know, they'll think twice before actually installing one of these particular apps when they know that their data, their pictures, their messages are getting stolen. So I think, you know, it'll help a lot. I don't say that it'll uh, completely eradicate the problem, but yes, it'll definitely help a lot. Well, I guess in the near term, what people can do is share this interview with uh, their friends and family. That's the fastest way to get people educated about what's going on. Thank you Thanks. very much for joining us today. This was uh, one of the more horrifying podcasts we've done. Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm living in fear now. So it was a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you so much, Matt. Thanks. Thanks Definitely. for having You know, really, like listening to that podcast, like I'm reminded of like all the old sci-fi stories from like the 50s and 60s about, you know, a computer god ruling a civilization. It really doesn't seem so far-fetched anymore. I know. I, I kind of almost want to now write like a sci-fi book or movie script about what the future is going to be like when 
China's the Chinese Communist Party's new world order with respect to data is basically taken over our lives. And like you'll have like like the group of resistance will be the people who use flip phones. I mean, uh, we got to be luddites. They had the right idea, smash every piece of technology. Every piece of technology? Yeah. But having my iPhone is so convenient, Chris. Can we, oh, can well, we not just that. Keep, keep the one thing? We keep the iPhones and the cameras and the mics and the head. That's true. We'll definitely need all of this. Yeah. I mean, look, if we're going to be Cassandra screaming into the void, we at least need our YouTube channel to scream into the void through. Yeah. So considering doing these shows, we have absolutely no free time. How are you going to write that sci-fi story and movie? Oh, yeah. No, I, I don't think I am. Um, Much better just to watch the podcast and yes, share it with your friends yes, and family. Exactly. And in particular, we also have China Uncensored, our main show, on a specific Hindi channel as well. It's, you know, get to the Indian audience. And so it offers Hindi translations with voiceovers for our episodes. We'll put the link to that below. Uh, this podcast should also be on that uh, channel as well. So definitely check it out. Once again, I am Chris Chappell. And I'm Matt Ganesta. And Shelly sends her love. See you next time.